Welcome to Photoshop Tips from the Digital Transformer. I'm Dennis Dunbar, and in this tip, we're going to talk about masking out green screen images and a two-step process I've developed for making this process easier. If you watched the previous video tutorial, this image here will be pretty familiar to you. We have a model, and we have a background, and what we want to wind up with is something like this, where our model is composited nicely against the background. The challenge in doing something like this is we have a smoother edge here, but we also have all these flyaway hairs here that we want to capture. And we want to get both parts of this mask looking really nice together. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is start off with making a layer mask. We're going to click on the model layer, the one without the layer mask, and we're going to come up here to select, choose color range, and we see this is already set up, so it's selecting the background pretty nicely for this. If you look here in little dialog, we have invert selected. That's because if we don't have this turned on, it's going to select our background and make a hole where our model is. And we want to wind up with the background being dropped out and the model kept. And since with a layer mask, white reveals and black conceals, we're going to click on invert. And the preview here shows us we should wind up with something pretty close to what we need. So let's click OK. Let it do its calculations. It will turn that into a selection. We have our selection active. And now with that active, we can come over to our Layers palette, click on this little Layers Mask icon in the bottom, and that will turn our active selection into a layer mask. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to double check the layer mask to make sure it's nice and clean. This is what was covered in our previous video tutorial, so we're going to go through this part really pretty quickly. We're going to make sure we've selected our layer mask here, because that's what we want to look at. We're going to come up to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. And with the Curves dialog, we can bring the black point way over here, and that's going to exaggerate all the dark values in the mask. And we see that we've got a lot of dirt in here showing up, which is going to make holes where our background is bleeding through our model, and not a situation we want. We put that back to where it was. We bring the white over, way over, and we see there's some stuff in here that's not quite black, and it's going to allow some of that green screen background to bleed through in our layer mask. Not something we want to have happen either. But in this particular case, it's really pretty easy to clean up. If we look at the history, the histogram values here, we can bring the black point over just a little bit past all that, which is going to get rid of a lot of the white stuff showing up in here. And if we bring the white values over pretty far to around here, it's going to clean up an awful lot of the stuff in here. We don't want to get these too close, because if we get this part too close, it makes our edge look a little too harsh. And that's not something we want to have happen. So we're going to click OK. Now we're going to go through this process one more time just to make sure we got it right. We bring up adjustments, curves. Again, we bring the black point way over. And we see just about the only thing showing up in here is a uh, couple of holes where eyes were. And let's bring that back over. Let's check the black point, or the black part. We see we still have some white stuff showing up in here. So that's going to need to do some paying attention to as well. I think our two-step process will help clean up a lot of the stuff in the background, but we can always double check that at the end of the process. So we're just going to click Cancel here because we didn't want to make any changes to it. And to get rid of the area where the eyes were, it's really pretty easy. We're going to take the Lasso tool, select around where those two spots were. We're going to make sure white is our foreground color. We're going to come up to Edit, Fill, Fill with Foreground Color and say OK. So that should have gotten rid of the dark holes in there, and we can move on with our process. Click back on here so we see the resulting image with our layer mask. We still have the layer mask selected, but now we get to see what our image looks like with the composite here. And if we zoom in a little bit to check out where we're at so far, we'll see that our layer mask here is looking like it's capturing most of the edge here pretty well, but we've got some jaggedies happening in here. It's picking up some of the green from the background. Not something we want. The hair really has a lot of problems with it. But we're going to worry about that in the second part of our process. So the first thing we're going to do is, again, with our layer mask selected, always make sure you have that selected. We're going to come up here to Window, and we're going to bring up Properties. In Photoshop CS6, the Refine Masks icon Refine Masks tool is found in the Properties window. It's found in a different place in CS5, but since we're working with CS6 here, let's move on. We're going to click on the Mask Edge, and that's going to bring up Refine Mask. Now, the first thing you see is here in the View Mode, 
we have all these different choices for how we view our layer mask and how we review the result of what we're doing. In this particular case, on layers works really well for us. But you might find with some other image that you want to choose something else. It's really a matter of what's convenient for you. Let's leave it to, to on layers. And the part we want to address right now is the edges around here. So we're going to bring up the smoothness just a little bit, add just a little bit of a feather to this because we want this edge here to be just about as hard and just about as soft as the edges we find in the image that comes around there. This is softening it up nicely, but we still have some of the green. So we're going to bring in the shift edge, and that's going to bring the values of the mask in. So we're kind of chucking our mask and getting rid of that green border around here. This is looking a lot better. Maybe we want to bring this in just a little bit more, about like this. And let's say that's OK. So we'll click OK. So now, let's zoom out a little bit. We find we're getting a better looking result around here, but we still have a problem around the hair. So this is where our second step is going to be. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see all the hair more easily. Again, with the layer mask chosen in our layer icon, in our layer palette, we're going to click on Mask Edge one more time. And this time, instead of doing Smooth and Feather and all that, we're going to come over here and choose Smart Radius. Now this is where you're asking Photoshop to start looking around the borders there and calculate what it thinks should be and should not be in your layer mask. And let's just start sliding the radius up here a little bit till we start seeing. Already starting to show an improvement. We still have some problems here. This is always sort of a thing that's depending on the nature of the image, the resolution of the image. There are lots of factors that come into this. So I find it's somewhere where I have to adjust it differently for just about every image I'm working on. It's looking better. We still have some green showing up in here. Let's keep pushing this up a little bit. In fact, let's take this all the way up here just to see what this looks like. And in this case, it's looking really pretty good. It's cleaned up most of the problems we had in the edges here and around here, and that's looking really pretty good. But before we click OK, we have to pay attention to another couple of parts of our refined mask dialog. We have decant, decant, decontaminate colors. Try saying that 10 times quick. We have decontaminate colors here. What this does, if we click this on, Photoshop will work to take away any of that green edge that's still bleeding into the hair here. So that kind of blends this color out into the image a little bit and helps take care of any green spill we have coming from that background here. When we turn that on, it automatically brings up to output new layer with layer mask. This is the critical part of this. Whether we turn this on or off is not so critical. But this is the critical part. We want to wind up with a new layer with a layer mask. It's going to give us a copy of what we just did with a brand new layer mask. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Let's click OK. Let that calculate. It takes just a moment to go through. And here we go. Let's clean the, close this. And here we have a new copy of our layer and a new layer mask for this. If we option click on here and zoom in and look, we'll see it's looking a lot better around the hair couple of things we can clean up around here. But over around here, we're getting some gray showing up in the edges of our mask. It becomes really apparent here. This is where that refined edge, the, the smart radius thing, wasn't helping us with our with our image here. The previous, the previous image we had, the previous mask we had here, was a lot cleaner for around here than this one was. Turn these things on. It was a lot cleaner than this was. So what we want to do is ideally we'd wind up with something that combines this mask with this mask for the parts we want to keep for each one. Since the hair is a smaller part of the image, it's going to be easier to, to combine this and just restore the hair than if we work the other way. If the hair were the majority of the image, we'd work this in the opposite direction. In this particular case, we can combine these two things by clicking on here, holding down the Option key, and dragging and dropping here. And this is going to allow us to replace our layer mask that we did for the hair with the layer mask that we did for all the rest of this part. OK, let's turn this on. So fine, we've got this now where we've back to where we were before that. Ah, but if we use the history palette and the history brush, we can easily combine the two. You see, the step we did right before now was to refine it, refine mask for the hair. So we click on this for our history state. And we click on this for what we're going to use with the history brush, and then come over here to the history brush. It will allow us now to brush in all around the edges here the previous adjustment we had made for the layer mask around the hair. 
Option clicking here and zooming in, and you see very easily we have now combined the second step of this process where we went through and adjusted it just for the hair with the first step of the process where we adjusted it for the rest of the body for this. Still a couple of things we can clean up and this we can do very easily. We can go to the paintbrush and brush a little white over these areas here, clean up some of this stuff in here. We could choose black for our foreground color and paint white, paint black over here, clean up some of these things. This can take a lot of finesse and adjusting, and that's something that we'll cover in the next video perhaps. But for now, what I wanted to talk, show you was how to use the Refine Mask tool twice and combine them with the History Brush so that we can get the best of both worlds. So this gives us a great start for our green screen composite. We've eliminated the background nicely. We've got a good edge around her body and a pretty good edge around the hair, and it's all coming in a really pretty quick moment. That's the tip for today. Hope to talk to you guys for the next one and thanks a lot. Bye.